let's go ahead and make a quote. I'm going to start with an account. So let's click on the IT Equality account. Since we have a contact right here, I'm going to click into this contact record. From the contact record, I can make a new opportunity. And Salesforce, before we even get to CPQ, Salesforce is going to know that this opportunity is associated with this contact. I'll show you that in just a minute. We'll give this a close date of the end of the month and we'll call this my first CPQ deal. Okay, give this a stage and let's see if we can save with just the bare minimum. We've got our opportunity created and right away you can see under contact roles, there is a primary contact for my contact record right here. At this point, when I click on the new quote button, this is a quick action. From the new quote button, I can give this a start date. So let's say it starts at the same time as our quote, subscription term. This is required for contracts to work as well as the start date. Let's go ahead and save this. I won't make it primary yet, but I'll do that as soon as I configure my products. Now that we have a quote that's been created, I'm going to go in here and edit some lines by clicking on the edit lines button. Now I'll be taken to the quote line editor. I'll have to choose our price book. If we have different price books, just make sure that you're selecting the right one. You can have this defaulted if you need to, but for now I'll click save because we only have one price book in this dev org. The information that we entered in on the quote is showing up at the top of the screen because these fields have been added to the quote line editor. I'll add products in here. In this screen, we have basic fields out of the box, but these can be customized. Also, we have our search criteria. We can search by product family. So if I wanted to look for, say, just services, I could apply that filter. And now I'll only see my, my service items. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up our products so that we can compare to which ones were subscription and renewable. All right, so let's organize these. We have a few, so we have some, some of our support and service, home security monitoring and warranty, as well as video storage. So let's go ahead and add in some of those. So under, we'll say home security, we're going to select these and then go ahead and add more products. Let's add some more products here. I will filter these by the support and apply. Now we'll do our limited warranty as well as this warranty. What else do we want to add in here? That looks good. I'm going to save those. And now that these have been fully configured, we can add an additional discount if we'd like. Let's say we're going to give a 10% discount. Let's see what happens to our total when I click on calculate. We're now, our total has been reduced. If in addition to a quote wide discount, I wanted to add further discounts, I could manually choose to discount these so long as the lines were um, allowed to be discountable. I can also discount in number of dollars. If somebody says, you know, I really only have budget for $8 per item here, you can do an additional discount. I'll just click on calculate again. You can see our total is now changing. Let's change our quantities for a few of these. Get five of those, maybe 10 of these over here. Click on calculate again. All right, so we've changed our quantity. We've given some additional discounts. Everything looks good here, so I'm going to go ahead and 
save now. Once I save this quote with my lines, I can click the box for primary in order to sync this over to our opportunity. All of the quote lines that I can see under related or by hovering over this quote line um, quick link, all of these items are going to be added to the opportunity. So I'll click on opportunity and give my screen a refresh really quick. Here we go, we have our three, uh, we have our more than three products listed here. Our amount has been updated to reflect this total because I marked this as primary. If I had a new primary come along, I could always check that box and it would reconfigure these lines. At this point, I can go through and finish the rest of my opportunity sales all the way until closed one. And once I'm ready, I can check the box for contracted in order to have this opportunity become a contract. So let's go ahead and check this box for contracted. So I'll click on my edit, check the box and save. It's important to note that in order for a contract to be created, your account has to have the right contract settings. Your um, products need to be subscription products and your quote must have a start date as well as a term. So if I refresh my screen, here's my contract. So I met the criteria to generate a contract. This is specifically for software and subscription sales. If you're selling hardware, you would have an asset-based renewal model. This is not the asset-based renewal model. This is specifically the contract-based renewal model. So let me click into our contract. Under our details, we can see what opportunity and quote originally created this particular contract. And if I go to my related items, I can see I have two subscription records right here. As long as these subscription records are renewable, I can renew this. The first thing that I would want to do would be to check on renewal forecast. This is going to create an opportunity for forecast purposes only. Let me check on this box right now, and then I'll hit save for renewal forecast. All right, so at this point, we've generated this renewal opportunity. And if I click into this renewal opportunity, it's going to have an amount and products that reflect only the renewable subscription items. We originally had four products, but in this case, we only have two because these were the renewable products. So our amount is going to reflect that. If I look down here, I can see by this checkbox that this is a renewal as well as this is a renewed contract. The contract that was originating this renewal is located right here. And if there was a new contract that had been created, um, future dating, then it would show up over here under the new contract, so to speak. Also note that our close date matches the end date of our original contract. So our close date here is 5-30-2020. If I go back to my original contract, our end date is 5-30-2020. That's because at the quote level, we said this was a 12 month contract and we took the start date plus the contract terms to have CPQ automatically populate that end date for us. At this point, let's say a few months have gone by and now we would like to make a change because somebody decided, oh, I really love your products and I'd like to purchase more licenses, but I really need them to all co-term at the same end date. We can do that by going to the amend. Sometimes there's additional settings we need to check. So let's see how this goes. I can review my subscription lines that I'm about to amend. And yes, this is what I, I would like to amend. So when I click on that button for amend, I'm taken directly to the quote line editor. Inside of this quote line editor, Behind the scenes, we've created an amendment opportunity 
that's already created, an amendment quote that's marked as primary for that amendment opportunity, and now you'll notice even though we have a quantity of 10 and 5 here, our total is showing up as zero. The reason for that is that these are quantities we've already paid for. So we're making a change to the existing quantity that we've already purchased. In the event that I said, you know, I really, I changed my mind about that warranty. I don't want to have a warranty anymore. As soon as I click calculate, you're going to see that I now have a negative balance here because I've returned that product. Similarly, if I were going to add quantity and say I'd like to upgrade to 15, and now I click on calculate, you'll see that the upsell and the return are going to balance each other out in order to give us a net total that is only the newly changed amounts. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and see what happens when we mark this as a contracted amendment opportunity. I'll go back to my opportunity. The naming convention has been pre-populated for me and this is a standard naming convention. It can be overwritten with customization such as a process builder. At this point, you can also change the record type with a process builder if you'd like to customize this process. We have no contract that's been generated yet, but there is a reference saying that this, this has an amended contract of our original contract. I'm going to check on this contracted checkbox because at this point I've already worked the deal with the customer and they've agreed and seen the amended uh, template for their, their quote and they've said yes, this is something I want to move forward with. So we're going to head in, we're going to click this box. And as soon as this generates, I'll go ahead and click into our contract. Now, if I look at our related subscriptions and I view all, you can see that I have a negative amount here and then I have an extra amount for five. So this is where you can see that I purchased 10 and then I added an additional 10. I did not take this opportunity to show you proration, but I can do that in another video. This is the amendment process. Now, if you'll go back to when we first were making this contract, we checked on the box for renewal forecast. The renewal forecast does not take into account that amendment. So if I look at this renewal opportunity, it still only has two products. That's okay because when we first forecasted, we didn't know what changes were going to happen. If I go back and now I click on the box for renewal quoted, the renewal quoted amount is going to reflect all of those changes that have happened over the course of this contract's lifetime. So when I click on save now for renewal quoted and I give the system a chance to load, if I go back to my renewal opportunity at this point and I refresh my screen, Now we have a renewal quote and our amount has changed. This is going to reflect all of the changes that have happened across the lifetime of this contract. So if you remember, we removed the warranty and we added five licenses to the quantity. This is now showing the sum total of what should be renewed based on all of the changes that have happened. At this point, we can go ahead and we can work this renewal opportunity and continue to close it and mark it as contracted, at which point we would generate a new contract. And then the contract that we generate would have a start date of whatever your contract, uh, your quote start date has, and the cycle would move forward. This concludes the contracting process of CPQ as well as quote generation. In another video, I will go over proration and I will also go over the quote templates that you can get out of the box with a CPQ trailhead developer org. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.